Here's a review of the Canon Vixia M HF M400. This there's a couple different models of this. Three different models of this camera. This is the, uh, I guess the most basic you could say, the M400. There's also the M40 and the M41. And the big differences, some of the big differences between this and the other models is that this has two compact, compact flash card spots here, whereas one of them has one compact flash card spot and 16 gigabytes of internal memory. The other one has 32 gigabytes of internal memory and no compact flash card. For my purposes, I thought it would be easier just to be able to take the cards out and put the cards in my computer. And also this one was a couple hundred dollars cheaper. I think some of the other ones also have a um, optical viewfinder, um, if you or a digital viewfinder, um, if you need that. But otherwise, it's the same processor, same lens. Uh, so the picture quality between all of them should be the same. And like I said, this one at uh, 650 was a couple hundred dollars cheaper. I think the most expensive one was 850 or so. Now, just going over the construction of it. On this side here, uh, there's the strap. As you can see, it fits pretty well in my hand. I have medium-sized hands, and it's a nice size in my hand. The strap is adjustable. Basically, you lift this flap up here, and you pull this here, you tighten it, put it back down, and put that back there, and it will hold that in place. And then it will fit pretty securely in your hand. Over on this side here is the door for the SD cards. I really don't like the placement of these. They're not super, they're pretty easy to get in. You know, there's two spots here. One here, one here. You just push it in and it's in there. And then you close the door. However, when to getting them out, it's not super hard, but sometimes I have a little bit of trouble getting in there pulling them out. It's a small annoyance, but I think that could be just a little bit better designed. Some of the other cameras I'd seen had it on the inside and here, and I thought that was a little bit easier to deal with. But anyway, it's not super bad, just a minor complaint. On the bottom, spot for a um, tripod mount. This here is the battery release. This slides forward, the battery slides out, there's the battery. And as you can see, the battery's a little recessed in there. I think they do have a larger capacity battery that may fill this out. Uh, otherwise, it looks a little odd there. Uh, this here is the power port. Plug the, uh, the AV power, or the, uh, uh, the power into there, power cable. This is the record button. Nice and handy location for your thumb. Also on this side, the different modes, auto mode, manual mode, and cinema mode. Auto mode basically puts it, you know, the camera takes almost complete control over everything. You have just a, f a few options, but overall uh, the camera does all the work for you. Manual mode, you can control a lot of stuff. Um, and then in cinema mode, it records it in 24 frames a second. Whereas in manual, you can do 30 or even 60 frames a second. Uh, the 24 frames a second is apparently what actual uh, motion pictures are recorded in. And then it has several different filters from uh, black and white filter to sepia to dream, uh, several different filters that it can apply to them to give it a little bit, a little bit different look. So that's a nice easy spot to uh, pretty much to get to and change. On the top here, zoom in, zoom out right there. And then here's a spot for a, a mini hot shoe. Over on this side, or on the front here, stereo microphone, lights. Over here is a spot for uh, to plug in a microphone, if you want to use an off-camera microphone. I think this here is a speaker. And then opening it up, on the inside here, AV out, USB out, HDMI and component out. Here's some different buttons for uh, stuff you can control on the screen. Uh, speaking of that, here is the screen. Turn it on. Power button right here. Nice location again. So, in full automatic mode, there's the screen. You can use this button here, the battery button. It'll turn some of that information off, I believe. Maybe not in full automatic. Go into manual. There we go. Now we can get rid of some of that information on the screen if you like. Bring it back on. The uh, functions of it, uh, well, a couple other things here. Video snap is something that you can use to record short video clips. I think you can change it to two, four, or eight seconds. You turn that on, puts this little blue bar around the outside here. You press the record button, and this goes around the outside. Records it for, in this case, four seconds, and then it's done. And you can string those together, apparently, with some of the software in the, uh, in the camera to do some different uh, 
make some different editing techniques. Some things here on the screen here, you press this button, it says photo, that will take a picture. Over here you can use this to draw on the screen. Some different information here, this says the MXP, it's recording at the highest level, highest quality, 30 frames a second, hour and 12 minutes left on the battery, 40 minutes left on the uh, memory card. It's in color, I think this is uh, sunlight as far as the white balance goes. Then to get in the menu here you hit this function button. This brings up the menu that you basically sort through by putting your finger on the screen and moving up. You have to press fairly hard. So you can get the different options here, say the white balance, you press on that. And then you can change it, automatic, daylight, cloudy, again, just slide up and down with your finger. Because of all this touching of the screen you do, obviously this is a touch screen, but the screen gets pretty fingerprinted. Minor annoyance, you have to wipe it off a lot. Uh, aside from these, you can go into the menu and you can change some other options. Again, sliding through them by moving it up and down through here. Go into the uh, different options here, recording mode. Basically, you slide them up until you get the, get through the line here. Here you can go 60 frames a second, 30 a second, or 24. 60 apparently is uh, more than you can see on a computer, uh, at least for viewing online. I guess it's more for doing the TV. 30 is optimum for a computer. 24 is that movie mode. Press the back button. You can go back to here. For some reason, in this menu, they have a back button, or you can press the X to get all the way out of it. If you're in here and you go into, say, the white balance, for instance, there's no back button. You have to press the X to get all the way out of it, then go back into it. I'm not sure why they didn't do that, why they have it set up that way. But again, you know, you go into one of these options here, and um, and there's a back button. So a bit of a poor design there. They just kind of forgot a button. It would have been a nice addition there uh, to have that. Powered image stabilization button here. You hold it down. I think you have to hold it down the whole time from what I've discovered because you let go of it and uh, it goes off. There are a couple of different versions of the, of the image stabilization, which shows up here. Right now it's set for dynamic. There's also standard and off. Um, so that's basically the screen. You, know, you can also get into the menu down here, close it, functions. So a couple of different ways into that. Zoom in here on the top. What I found with the zooming is that if you want to zoom in, let's use this knife. All right, so here we are with a knife. I'm gonna make this brighter because right now it's a little bit dark. And so you go in here, actually you go into function, exposure, press it and you can just press this up arrow. We'll go up, uh, up to plus two here. So there's the knife on the screen. You can zoom in on the knife autofocus what I've found is the autofocus on if you wanted you're all the way zoomed in does not focus very well however if you zoom out and then you move the subject right up to the screen and this is probably a little bit hard to see through the camera here but it actually focuses very well macro mode at short distances but at telephoto all the way zoomed out it has a really hard time focusing on these things. Now what you can do is you can put it into the full auto mode and it actually does a lot better job focusing. This is again all the way zoomed in. Still not quite all the way focused, but something this will do here has this, this little screen and it will go into macro mode automatically. We are here. And again, it uh, does a pretty good job. Let's see if we can get this out in front of it here. It does a pretty good job zooming in on it. Again, at, at close distance, only if you're zoomed out. It goes automatically into that macro mode and does a pretty good job there. If I zoom in, Get on the automatic mode. It will hunt, it does a better job, but it still has trouble focusing all the way out at the full telephoto there. Back out a little bit, still has trouble. Back all the way out, it does, it does an okay job. So you can pick different places on it to zoom, at least if you're in the full auto mode, or I mean the, the manual mode, 
you can say I want to focus right here, I believe. Right there I want to focus. And it will focus in different spots based on that. Again, here's the you press the this button for a photo. And it takes a photo. The, the movie itself, if you're recording during that, will not be affected. So that's nice. Oh, by the way, here's the recording button, just show you this. Press that. And actually what you can do is if you want to follow a person around here, I've said that I want to focus on this spot on the knife, and it will follow that around the video. So you can do that with people. So you want to focus on one person on a uh, you know in a group or something, you can put the put that spot on that person and it will move it around. So a pretty nifty feature there. Stop the recording, turn it off, close it, and there you go. Now, this camera, the files this records in are, can be a little bit of a challenge. It records in MTS format, which I guess is the format used for these high definition video cameras. And on a Mac, on a PC, it's not so much of a problem. I, my programs recognize it without a problem. But on a Mac, the Mac does not natively recognize those files. You have to go download uh, an extra program. I suppose you could use the program that comes with the camera itself. Um, but a Mac will not, you're going to have a little bit more trouble viewing and editing those files. So just something to be aware of. That's been, you know, I found that on a message boards all the way back to 2008. It's now 2011. I thought that would have been a little bit easier by now, but but apparently not. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't use them on my Mac. But um, anyway. Quick thing to show you with the, the cinema mode. Put it over into cinema. Turn it on. Now the cinema mode has several filters. After it fully comes on, it'll show you that down here is the filter. Press that, you go into the filter menu. There's nine filters, starting at cinema standard, which is just standard cinematic look it shows it tells you here vivid dream cool nostalgic creates movies from the 70 look from the 70s sepia old movies memory dramatic black and white and then back to the cinema standard so you put on whichever one of those you know you put it in this uh, old movies you say okay it'll tell you down here that you are in filter 7 and then that applies that to uh to all the movies that you take from it. Shows you over here that you're in cinema mode, that you have the uh, 24 frames a second. You can close it here, that'll put it in kind of a standby mode. And if you open it back up, it comes back on. Otherwise you can turn it all the way off and it's off. So there you go, just a basic rundown of the, the camera itself, or the construction of it, some of the features. I'll put up a separate video where I've taken some footage with it so you can see what the actual, you know, the movies from it look like. I've done a couple different modes, and I'll try and compare and contrast those a little bit. One of the nice things that this has, as compared to the uh, Canon T2i, the digital SLR that I'm actually shooting this movie with, is that it does the autofocus. You know, if I move this in, as you can see here, it is out of focus, and it does not autofocus. Unless I press the button on the camera itself, it will then focus, but then back down here, and I'm back out of focus. So one of the nice things, you know, I've done a lot of product reviews, and you can check out some of my other videos. One of the nice things about this camera for something like that is that it automatically focuses. I mean, it's nice for that as well as for really any situation you're going to be in. But the autofocus actually does, it focuses pretty quick. So nice feature there. Um, you know, if you're using a, a, an SLR to do movies, and doesn't probably have a an autofocus. That's going to be a definite advantage here. This is also a lot smaller and a lot lighter to carry around. You know, it fits in your hand. I put this in the top pocket of my camera bag, and it just fits it very well. Pretty light. You can take pictures with it. I think they're around two megapixel pictures. Uh, you know, a maximum resolution around uh, 1920. Um, so they're not huge pictures, but you know, not bad for what you get with this. Also, one of the other nice features about this, and I'm not going to go through all the features. You can get all the specs, you know, from Canon's website or from Amazon or somewhere like that. But one of the other nice features about this camera itself is that because of the, the processor it has, it, it doesn't have to compress the video at all. It records it natively in 1920, um, you know, a size. And so the video is not compressed, and it will ultimately give it a much better, uh, apparently, video quality appearance. So 1920 by 1080 native here.
So another nice feature of this. This feature that they have on some of their higher end cameras, and this again is kind of mid-range. You know, their their video cameras go from low of like $400 up to $1,400 for these sort of prosumer based cameras. So anyway, there's just some basic uh, basic stuff about this camera. Check out my other videos. You can see the some footage from it. And uh, thanks for watching.